All right, so we're just going to quickly introduce ourselves because we realize that some people here, although we've met a lot of you, may not know who we are. Um, so my name is Johnny. I'm from Northern Ireland, if you can't tell. Um, <laughs> live near to Belfast. Um, so my name is Kezia, and I'm from South London, just near like the Croydon area. Yeah. Um, my name's Anna, and I actually live in Weymouth, so not too far away. Um, hopefully you guys don't know who I am. <laughs> but my name's Paul for any of the visitors here. Um, so yeah, we're going to show you a quick two-minute video of uh, a quick, uh, well, whatever we've been up to. So yeah. Sawadika. Hello, I'm Kezia. This is Paul, Anna and Johnny. And we're Team Thailand. Okay, so, um, this is our last day in Shanghai and we're leaving tomorrow. Um, so we've been here six months, we spent the first month in Chiang and then four months in a village called Wang Dang and then back in the last month. We've had an amazing time, um, so much fun um, in the different projects that we've been in and also just um, doing some other stuff. Well, it's been really good. So yeah, we're really excited to be back and to share what we've been up to with you guys. I'm going to show you some videos now of some of the stuff that we've been up to. Hope you enjoy. Enjoy! This is real love. This is real love. This is real love. This is real love. Um, that was a little short video um, of what we've been up to. It's so nice to be here um, and to share a bit about what God's done in our lives over the last six months. And it's great to see, like, to be in a team and see how God's worked so individually in all of us. But yet, as a team, he has spoken so much and he has done immeasurably more. When um, we were in Chiang Mai for the first and last month, um, we got involved in Hope Home, which is a home for children with disabilities. Um, it was set up by Judy Cook, and now um, the staff there, along with another lady named Becca, kind of run it. And um, it's a real place where these children can call home. Often they're um, left because of their disabilities, and so Hope Home take them in, um, really care for them, and provide all their needs. And it was really um, precious for us to be there, to see um, God at work in these kids, to see how the staff care for these kids, and really are the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, working at Hope Home 
um, alongside this, I was doing a Bible study, actually, on um, what it means to have a servant heart. And God really brought it to life in this place in Hope Home. And one of the things he really spoke to me about was um, we need to remember who we serve when we're serving others, that we are serving the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God of angel armies. And actually, when we go out and serve other people, like what Judy and Becca and a lot of the staff are doing here at Hope Home, when we go out and serve people in our communities, we're serving them for God. We're worshiping him by following his commands to serve other people. Um, I was looking at a verse um, in John 13, 14 to 15, which says, So if I am your teacher and Lord, and have just washed your dirty feet, then you shall follow the example and wash one another's feet, dirty feet, serve one another. And it really spoke to me that Jesus came down. He came down from heaven. He healed us. He carries us. He lifts us up. He really is the servant king. And actually out of that knowledge of who he is and what he's done for us, we can go out and serve one another. From that power source, from that energy source of him serving us, we can go out and serve other people. And we're called to do that. And it was just really precious um, for God to bring to life what it means to have a servant heart through being at Hope Home from, yeah, just seeing them give their all for God, to give everything up. Judy Cook's been there now 20 years, so she's dedicated 20 years of her life to this home. And we have seen God move so powerfully in these kids, and they have shown us more of Jesus just being there. It was a real honor to be there and, yeah, just um, see God at work. Okay, so... So we spent um, roughly four months in uh, Uttaradit, um, in a little village called Wangdeng, um, and we were able to work with our supervisors, Witt and Helen uh, Bundakum, um, and we were involved with the new church they were building, um, and with teaching English down at the local school. But um, when settling into Wangdeng for the first week, um, as a team, we found it very difficult trying to adjust to the culture, adjust to the weather, um, and to understand the, the very difficult language um, and just trying to build relationships while we're out there. Um, and um, where's the clicker? Oh, good. So um, at the end of the week, we went down to the lake just at the bottom of the village um, and this is where we took this photo at the lake. And um, during that time, we really felt as though God was saying to us that we were meant to be there, that we should embrace the time we are staying here because he'll, he'll come and he'll show himself through um, all the weaknesses, all the, all the, all the um, times we might struggle there. So um, uh, one of our team prayer points is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13. Chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And when we really trusted in God, when we step out, when we stepped out of our faith and we just put our faith into God, He He answered our prayers. He um, just 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 really helped us in very difficult situations and um, when we were, as I just mentioned, the weather, um, when we were trying to adapt to the weather, it was very hot. It was <laughs> ridiculously hot. Um, it was like 38 degrees, something like that. Um, and we were praying for cooler weather, and we didn't just get cooler weather, it rained heavy. <laughs> um, and that was just a true answer to prayer, um, how God was just looking out for us um, during that time. Um, but also how we were we were accepted by the village, how um, everyone was so hospitable to us who, um, who just wanted to be around us and it really meant a lot to us to be um, accepted by the village. Um, but what it really showed us that God was able to break down those barriers, he was able to um, come through in moments where we would struggle and he would show his strength and 
there was a time as well when um, we had um, Worship Wednesday and there was a Buddhist ceremony uh, going on next door and in Thai culture, if they're having a celebration, it goes for 24 hours and it was very loud and we were um, just worshipping God, just, um, just praising him and in that moment, we felt as though we were, uh, we felt as though God was just overcoming that darkness that was around us, that uh, spir- spiritual opposition that was around us. And we just felt so encouraged by God that um, even though there's so much that was against us, he was, he was there for us. He was holding and looking after us. Um, and it just, yeah, yeah, just, just having faith and just putting our trust in God, um, it was able, yeah, just putting our trust in God, and we were just able to see how God just came through. Um, Kezia is just going to talk a little about, a little bit about um, what sort of stuff we got into in Wang Dang. Yeah. Um, so when we were in Wang Dang, we joined with our supervisors shown here, Wit and Helen. And they've been living in the village now for just over two years. And so when we went, we were able to join them. So going from a team of two to a team of six, we were really like able to boost the work and boost what they were doing. Because we were working with them, or when we also arrived, um, we arrived at the beginning of their church building. So they've recently started to build a church in the village. And when we got there, it was about their like a month into like just starting. So they have a service every other week and they invite people from the village to come. And some of these people, like the ladies at the front, they, the house we were staying in, they do lots of different groups as well. So they have the weaving ladies group and they have a guitar group. And it's a good way for them to come and come to the house that we live in and just a good way to build relationships with them. And for them, like they've started coming to church and lots of them like are regular attenders of the church there. And it was really amazing to be part of that. And every, every other week it was on. So we were able to, we were always involved in it in like doing songs or doing dramas or d- like different things. And since leaving, like the guitar group have like stepped up to like do like the different dramas each week, which is a great way for them to come. And it was so amazing to see. And on the last week that we were there in the village, there were 30 people at the church service. So we'd seen it grow from being around some tables from when we first started to being in rows, as you can see. Like, it was just amazing to be part of that. And by being part of that, we're also able to put on some events in the village. So around Christmas time, because we were working in, like, the local school in the village but you weren't able to talk about Jesus or really why we were there but around Christmas time it was amazing because we could share like the nativity story with them and we were able to talk about Christmas and we put on this event in the village on Christmas Eve Eve and we teach some classes in our house and we invited all the students along and we invited their parents along as well and they were involved with it so they were doing some songs and some dances and we had over 140 people turn up to the Christmas event and it was amazing to see it and just to see for some of the people there it was even the first time they've heard of Jesus or the first time they've heard the Christmas story at all and it was just amazing to be part of that and we were able to put this event on and just more like this more than this like turned up and they were able to just hear about Jesus for the first time and we had lunch after and it was just amazing and Christmas even though we were away from home it was amazing to be there in the village celebrating this but as well as Christmas we also were able to put on a Valentine's Day event so in Thailand yeah I know in Thailand Valentine's Day is slightly different but generally, so it's like about, they do like friendship love. So when we went to school on Valentine's Day, the children like ran up to us and they had heart stickers all over them and they run up to you and give you heart stickers. So we came home that day like covered in heart stickers, but it was really cool. But we were able to invite the children from the local school to come to our house that evening for Valentine's Day. And we had just over, I think, 50 people come. And it wasn't just about love. We were talking about God's love and Jesus' love for them. 
and we were able to do some songs, some games. We did some, like, told a parable story, watched some videos. I don't know if anyone's seen the Falling Plates video about Jesus, but it's a good one. And we were able to share that. And then we had some food after as well. And so, and because it wasn't at the school, we were able to talk about Jesus freely to them. And just being able to share God's love and Jesus' love and just to have fun together, it was amazing to be part of that and put on this Valentine's Day event. So while we were in the village, we had a week, a week in about the middle of the four months we were there, and we were able to go to Bangkok for a week. So this is, and we were staying in the church, which we, our supervisor, like he grew up in. And while we were there, we were able to go to many different schools and many different, yeah, just different places. And we were part of the youth group there, did stuff in the church. And a busy week, but it was amazing. And the weekends that we were there, there was this amazing love festival with Franklin Graham. So it was a two-day festival. It was a free festival for people to come. And each day, over 20,000, about 20,000 people each night were at the music festival. It was amazing. So we had, the first half was like different singers. And so you could like lots of different singing going on. And then the second half, Franklin Graham shared his, the Jesus story, the simple message of the gospel. And the first night I went, I was really like struck by it. Like, I've heard the gospel message and everything. You hear it, but like just in the simplicity of how he shared it, he literally shared it, the gospel message, like as simple as it is about Jesus and that how we just all need forgiveness and Jesus is the only way. And it just really got me like hearing that. And over the weekend, over 2,000 people stepped forward to give their lives to Jesus. And you just saw them walking through. You'd, just, just loads, like a constant flow of people walking past you to go up to the front to accept Jesus. And it was just, yeah, inspirational to be a part of that. But just <clears throat> the people, they stepped forward just hearing the gospel message. There was nothing fancy about it or nothing, he, like, yeah, nothing fancy. He just shared it, like, how simply it is. But in its simplicity, yet, yeah, like, the power in the, power in the story of the gospel and this picture is one of in Bangkok at doing a school assembly and me and Paul were able to we had this drama called the sin jacket and it's the story of us and God and how and the black jacket was represents sin and Jesus can take that off of us but we were able to share and it was a great way to communicate to the people because there was no language needed. We just needed to drama. And then the drama spoke the words and the truth of the gospel message. So we're going to show a video of it that we did at the Christmas event. And I just want you to, as you watch it, just to think about the gospel story in all its simplicity, but in all the power of it. Yeah, so enjoy.
Okay, hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Um, we know the people in Thailand definitely did. Um, me and Anna love watching it. We get to sit and watch this every time. Um, and it's great, it's so powerful. And that is the story that each of us have to share. We all share the same, the same story. So I'm gonna try and tie together all together um, all the stuff you've been hearing about, everything we've been getting up to, um, everything that God has been doing. Um, it all ties together and we have seen God do so much and um, are so excited to share it with you guys. So we know as, as, as going on short-term mission teams, um, we know as part of that often and we are told um, that you're going to be there a short time, so you will sow the seeds, but you may not um, get to see the fruit. You may not be there while the fruit of that um, comes out. Um, and we were going out there um, knowing this, thinking this, um, but we were really, really blessed in our team um, and in our placement with our supervisors that we did um, get the opportunity to sow the seeds, but we also got to see um, a lot of the fruit of what God has been doing there. Um, we're so blessed in that, and I'm going to hold my hands up and say I wasn't expecting that. Um, we weren't expecting that at all. Um, God really blew us away. Um, so before going to Thailand, um, every team has to pick a team verse, um, and they also have to pick a team vision, but first I'm going to tell you what our team verse was. Um, Ephesians 3, verse 20. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ever ask or think. Um, and God really brought this verse to life um, for us over the six months. So um, he, like we weren't expecting, I wasn't expecting um, so much of what happened. Um, and that is not how it should be. We should be expecting God to do great things. But um, like we picked this verse um, and it's, I just find it so funny how it just became so true. Um, he answered so much of our prayer, as um, you have heard. He um, used us. Um, so many people were able to hear um, the the gospel story and um, the word of Jesus, um, and so much of what God was doing out there, and um, we got to be a part of. Um, and He was working so much through um, through us and in us. And um, we want to encourage you guys that the same God that came with us to Thailand. Um, is here as well. He came back with us. He was always here and he was always there. And the God who does infinitely more and than we'll ever imagine is the God who is here as well. Um, and that's why we're so excited coming back and sharing because we know that it doesn't stop in Thailand. Um, it continues on here. Um, and he will do infinitely more than you ask or think um, when you trust in him and um, when you ask to be used. Um, so our team vision, our team vision um, that we kind of came together with at the start um, of the year was this image, if you've ever heard it before, that we want to be the moon. Um, and this is what we said at the start of the year. We want to be the moon um, reflecting the sun, like God's sun, reflecting the sun's light into the dark places on earth. Um, and like the moon, we don't want to be able to shine without the sun. And we do not want to be able to do anything without Jesus, without God at the center of it. Um, and we wanted to be able to shine into these dark places, into the night um, in Thailand. And again, this became so true. God really brought this to life while we were in Thailand. Um, he used us. He did use us, but he used us in our weaknesses. Um, we are 19, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. Like, we are so inexperienced, and we didn't know what we were doing. Um, we were with missionaries who were experienced, but um, God used us in every sort of our weakness that he could. And one story where God completely blew us away um, is with this woman called Prang. So Prang was one of our friends in the village. Um, she, right from the start, Anna met her, um, probably the first week, was it? Um, she met her at the market down the road. Um, Anna was trying to buy fruit or food or something to cook with, and, and I'll tell you, in her weakness um, and limited Thai, she was finding it a bit hard to communicate what she was trying to buy. Um, and this woman, Prang, who speaks fairly good English, um, she was able to come and help Anna um, out with the buying of stuff, and instantly um, they became friends. Prang came around the next day or something. We all became 
great friends with Prang um, over the next while, sharing meals and chatting. Um, Anna would tell you that every time that she messed up in language, because Anna started teaching her English, um, every time that she messed up or Prang messed up, they'd laugh, um, and in their weakness, would become greater and closer friends. Um, we really got really close with her. So we were able to invite her to church, and we were able to invite her um, to all the events that we were doing. Um, and she was interested. She came. Um, and yeah, God worked in her life. We were praying the whole way through this for her um, and for lots of other people. Um, and she, we just saw her coming closer and closer and closer to God the whole way through our four months in the village um, until the Valentine's event. So that was two weeks before we left. Um, I had a conversation with her after watching one of the videos, and she knew um, she had an understanding that sin um, was in her life and in our lives. And she was telling me how we, how we all have sin. Um, we need God, and God's the only thing that can take our sin. And I was sitting there like, yes, yes, this is so true, this is right. She understands it. Um, and then the last time, and I had an English lesson with her one week before we left, um, Whit and Helen came early because we do Bible studies on a Monday morning, and they arrived a bit early and um, crossed over with Prang, so we were all out of the room, and Whit was chatting to her. Um, we came back into the room, hearing them chatting in Thai, not entirely knowing what they're talking about, and um, I suddenly just see her repeating a prayer after Whit. Um, he stands up and tells us afterwards that she's just given her life to Jesus. Um, and we saw this woman praying, our friend, turn from someone who is completely and doesn't even know who Jesus is, doesn't know anything about Jesus, in a Buddhist village. She would call herself a Buddhist to someone who will now message us saying, God loves me, who would have come out of church saying, I feel Jesus' love. She knows who Jesus is, and she feels his love, and she is living her life for him now. Um, and we were friends with her, but we had, we had nothing to do with how she turned to Jesus. God used us, and he used Wit and Helen, used every weakness that we had, um, and everything that we did there to bring her and others closer to Jesus, but to bring her to Jesus. Um, and it's just a story we love to tell over and over again, because this is what we want in every life. This is what we want in everyone around here in the UK, just as we want it in Thailand. Um, and I hope this is what you guys want um, for everybody that you know as well. And we want to encourage you that God has the power to answer your prayer. He has the power to answer your prayer. And he will do infinitely more than you ever ask or imagine. If you give him the space, if you trust in him, he can do that, um, especially if you're weak. Don't try and be strong. Offer up your weaknesses to God because we all have so many and he will use them. So in our weakness, his glory shines through. Um, and pretty much we have the same message for you as we have for the kids. He is everywhere. He is all powerful. He is so big. God is all around all of us um, and he's with us all the time. So we can trust in him and he will use us. He will do great things. In Thailand or here, he's with us, so watch him do infinitely more in your life and the lives of those around you. I'm going to pray to finish. Um, if you'll bow your heads with me. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are so good, that you are so great, and that when we are weak, you turn around our weaknesses and you use them for your strength, you use them for your glory, Lord. Thank you that when we pray to you, God, um, that you have the power to answer our prayers, then if it's your will, Lord, that you um, can come and change around a situation that just seems impossible, that it can never be changed around, you can make a Buddhist a follower of Jesus. Um, you can make us completely whole, Lord, and you come into our lives and you change everything. We thank you for that gospel story um, that thousands of people in Bangkok um, heard and realized the truth and responded to God. We thank you for the power that is in the simplicity um, of your story in our lives. We thank you um, that you take away the black jacket of sin and you put on the white jacket of forgiveness for us, Lord. And we want to share this story with people. We pray that you'll give us the power, use our weaknesses, use our prayers, Lord, answer our prayers and come and um, fill this place, this church, with your spirit, Lord. Fill this place with a hunger and a thirst to go out and share this gospel story, to go out and 
um, change this world around us here in the UK. We pray that you'll be with us this week. Bless us as we bless your name. Um, And thank you for the hospitality and the generosity of this church um, as we have come um, and spent this week with them, Lord. Amen.